Avi, the concept of fine tuning at this uh, conference, Physics of Fine Tuning, has uh, is now one that is engaging a, uh, a, a quite a number of uh, distinguished physicists, cosmologists, astronomists, including yourself, of course. Um, and it, it's it, this is fairly new because fine tuning has been an issue that uh, has been in, involved in the science theology debate. But this is the first time I've seen it fundamentally with uh, kind of mainstream physicists. So for, from your um, uh, uh, decades in uh, astronomy and uh, uh, cosmology and understanding the structure of the universe, what examples or counterexamples of fine tuning do you find? Well, the most popular example that is brought up uh, has to do with the cosmological constant. That's uh, also called the dark energy, the uh, substance that fill up the universe, fills up the universe and is causing its accelerated expansion. In principle, it just corresponds to the mass density of the vacuum. And for example, in string theory, the vacuum can have a huge number of possible mass densities. Uh, and so the question is, why do we live in a universe that has such a low vacuum density? If it had a much bigger vacuum density, galaxies like the Milky Way would never form. And so um, a common argument that is brought up in the context of fine tuning is that uh, in order to make galaxies like the Milky Way, that will form stars like the Sun, so that there would be planets like the Earth orbiting those stars and life as we know it would exist, in order for that to happen, the value of the cosmological constant needs to be low enough such that the accelerated expansion of the universe will start only relatively recently in cosmic history, when stars like the Sun have already formed 10 billion years after the Big Bang. And so that argument suggests that out of the many possible values, our region of space that allows us to exist as observers was selected and fine-tuned to have a low value of the vacuum density. My problem with this argument is that we know that stars started forming early on in the universe. Uh, already 30 million years after the Big Bang, the very first stars formed. It's very early. Very early. And in principle, you could have had stars and life in the universe at that, around that time. Uh, and so, even if the cosmological constant was a thousand times bigger, and the universe would have started to accelerate back when it was hundreds of millions of years old, it would have had life in it. The reason is the universe was smaller, so that the the uh, cosmological constant was uh, and the and the uh, the outward pressure for expansion would, would would be less because there was less space to deal with it. Because it's uh, it, it it is the uh, pressure it has to do with the vacuum itself. The the density is the same. So the more space you have, the bigger it gets. The cosmological constant or the vacuum density starts dominating the expansion of the universe. So it's as soon as matter is diluted right, right, right. to a density comparable or lower than the vacuum density. So as you go back in time, the density of matter was higher because you are reversing right. the movie backwards. Right. Instead of the universe expanding, it's contracting and getting denser. And so once you make the very first stars, you are pretty much done at establishing conditions for life. And in principle, even if the cosmological constant was a thousand times denser, than it is in our universe, you would still be able to form the very first stars. And shortly after that, the universe would have started to accelerate. So indeed, galaxies like the Milky Way would never form, but you could have life or next. Or, or, or the life would have been different, but different, it would have been earlier. But it would yeah. still be there. So now you can say, well, uh, what if the cosmological constant was smaller, okay? Then the universe would start to accelerate in the future. And that would also if it was be too fine. small uh, or negative, then it would it it, 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 it would have uh, all become black holes. It wouldn't have expanded in the distant at all. future. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. But um, if it's just smaller, uh, above zero, positive, but still yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, smaller, um, then uh, it would also be good for life because we know that life 
around low mass stars could in principle persist for 10 trillion years, a thousand times longer than the sun. And so uh, starting the accelerated expansion into the future would have actually helped life to blossom in our volume is, of the universe. Is what you're saying that the cosmological constant looks fine-tuned for us to be here today at this time, right. but it's not fine-tuned for other life, either prior or subsequent, exactly. for other kinds of life. Exactly. So that's, that's a fascinating point. Well, it's uh, yeah. the kind of argument you would make uh, that conditions had to be tuned so that you will be an American, let's say. Yeah, right. Uh, right. However, you find Chinese, uh, yeah. you find Europeans, <laughs> and their yeah. conditions are different, and there is no reason for you to expect that life would not exist in other cultures. Yeah. And so I'm talking about different <coughs> times in the history of the universe. Obviously, if you require the conditions to be right, to reproduce something that we see nowadays, they had, had to be very fine-tuned because to produce you uh, requires <laughs> yeah. very special conditions. Yeah, with the sperms and the eggs and uh, hundreds of millions each time. I mean, it's... it's right. It, it, the more everything. specific you are, the more fine-tuned the conditions have to be. Right.